Hi, this is Dr. William O'Neill. I'm the Executive Dean of Clinical Affairs at the Miller School of Medicine, University of Miami. I'm also a practicing interventional cardiologist, and today we're going to be talking about the PARTNER trial. Yes, uh, the PARTNER trial involved a disease called aortic stenosis, uh, very prevalent in older people. Uh, almost 30% of people over the age of 80 have some degree of stenosis of the aortic valve. Uh, in the United States right now, uh, almost 100,000 uh, operations a year are happening because of aortic stenosis. Partner study, I think, is going to be one of the monumental trials of cardiology. Uh, it involved the treatment of aortic stenosis with a non-surgical procedure. Uh, in this particular study, patients were randomized either to medical therapy or to treatment with a new valve that is implanted non-surgically. Uh, 350 patients were treated, and at one year, the survival rate was sub substantially higher for the patients that received the valve compared to the control group. Yes, this study involved patients that were deemed to be inoperable. Um, there are some specific criteria that are being used. The STS, or Society Thoracic Surgery uh, criteria, is a risk predictor that's been defined uh, over many years over all the patients that have been treated with heart surgery in the United States. So there, have to, there has to be a specific uh, risk number. In addition, a panel of surgeons at each of the institutions uh, examined the patients, evaluated them, and then decided whether or not they were uh, inoperable or not. Uh, many surgeons before we started this said that there's no such thing as an inoperable patient, but in fact, these elderly patients with lots of comorbidities, uh, advanced lung disease, severe diabetes, uh, other uh, frailty indexes, uh, when the doctors at the institutions reviewed them, really deemed that the mortality would be estimated to be greater than 50%. Uh, that's how they qualified for the trial. Well, we've known, uh, I've been involved with the treatment of aortic stenosis with balloon valvuloplasty or other surgical techniques for almost 25 years, and it's known that uh, there's a 50% mortality from the time of symptom onset of aortic stenosis to death, about half of the people die at one year. So, so th there really wasn't much of a surprise in terms of the control group. Uh, what was the surprise and was the big benefit is that the patients that were treated with the new valve had a higher survival. So 70% of those people survived uh, as opposed to 50% that survived in, in the control group. Uh, the reason that uh, the survival wasn't higher is because, again, these are a very ill, very frail group of people with lots of comorbidities. And so uh, even if the valve was fixed, a lot of the comorbidities would cause them to die. Uh, in addition, there were some, some procedural things. Uh, uh, there, about 16% of the patients had to have a vascular surgery to repair the blood vessel that was used to treat them. Uh, there were 5% of the patients that had strokes, uh, probably as a result of the procedure. So, so this is not a procedure that's, that's without morbidities. And then finally, it is a brand new procedure. There were 21 centers. Each of them were just learning how to do the implants. And I think that if you look at the results towards the end of the trial, uh, the survival rate for the patients that were treated at the end, I think, is going to be much higher. Well, aortic stenosis is a highly lethal disease. We know that from the time that people have onset of symptoms, heart failure, angina, or syncope, about 90% of those people are dead at two years. About 50% are dead at one year. So the natural history of this disease is very well known and very well established. And, and, and in my mind, it really seems unethical to continue to randomize patients to the control group of these trials, especially now that we know that there is a, a method that does work uh, in a randomized, multi-center, peer-reviewed publication, we know that there's a survival advantage with a percutaneous valve over the control group. So continuing to say, okay, another valve has to be randomized to control, I think is unethical. We, we already know what the outcome is for these patients. Half of them die at a year, 90% of them die at two years. So why would we subject more patients to randomized to control group? I, I just honestly couldn't do it. I don't think that our uh, human investigation committee at our hospital could agree to be involved with another controlled randomized trial now that the results of PARTNER have been published. 
I, I think that everybody kind of has been waiting for this, uh, this uh, trial to be presented. Uh, in, in my opinion, this is really a landmark and I think it's going to make everybody rethink trial strategy. Uh, Edwards is going to have to rethink their trial strategy. Uh, Medtronic is going to have to rethink their trial strategy. And more importantly, I think the FDA is going to have to rethink their, their trial strategy to get these companies to continue to have to randomize uh, to medical therapy or to antiquated therapies when we have these new wonderful promising devices available, I think is wrong. And so all, uh, all of the parties are going to have to rethink this. Uh, all of us have to get together to figure out how we can get these life-saving devices to American patients as quickly as possible.